And ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know it, you're in the middle of a war. And what we're dealing with on a daily basis are acts of war. You see, there's a Goliath in your life. What you're seeing is what David said, what do I get if I kill him? Now tell me again what I get if I take this guy out. This is Gene Bailey. He's a host of a TV show called Flashpoint, owned and operated by Kenneth Copeland. These people are about as far right as it gets. He gave a speech in a recent episode that threw up red flags left and right, like he was openly and blatantly mobilizing his audience to do something crazy. Now we're gonna watch this speech, but let me show you why it's important to talk about him in the first place. What's your message to them? How should they stay engaged with you and the nation during this tumultuous time? So nobody has done more for Christianity or for evangelicals or for religion itself. I want you to tell President Trump what you think of him right now. They're extremely influential among the far right. These people are not nobodies. This show is owned and operated by Kenneth Copeland, and they have close ties to Donald Trump. We have to talk about him. So let's listen to what they have to say. Let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know it, you're in the middle of a war. And what we're dealing with on a daily basis are acts of war. But let me say right here, I'm not talking about going and getting your AR and go down and take care of business. It's not what I'm talking about. <clears throat> However, we are in a war nonetheless. I have to imagine he felt the need to qualify the speech with that statement because of how dark it gets in a minute, as I'm sure you could tell from the opening clip. But when you say something like that, and a few minutes later you say something like this. What you're seeing is what David said, what do I get if I kill him? <laughs> now tell me again what I get if I take this guy out. It doesn't mean much to me. I don't care what you said ahead of time. It does not justify saying something like that. As far as I'm concerned, this is a serious escalation in extremism among right-wing thought leaders. What happened on November 8th? That stolen election, and yes, it was stolen. You know, what's interesting is how nowadays it's almost, Mike, not cool to say, to fix 2020. People like, oh, well, we just need to move on. That was an act of war. Okay, this is obviously just red meat for their listeners. They know the crowd will go wild if they talk about a stolen election for some reason. I have to imagine they get revved up over that subject because they don't want to accept that the world isn't the way they think it is. You have one of two choices when you look at Biden. And the best answer is that it's fraud that put him in there. Because the other one is, is that America is really stupid. <laughs> and I don't really want to face the fact that America is stupid. Come on. A lot of these evangelical thought leaders really do believe the U.S. is made up almost entirely of Trump supporters, and every Black Lives Matter protest you come across is the direct result of George Soros paying rioters $15,000 each to show up and wreak havoc. I'm dead serious. That's a quote from Pastor Greg Locke. He wrote this book titled, This Means War, We Will Not Surrender Through Silence. It was basically a long string of conspiracy theories brought together to a single place. Here's a quote from the book. Quote, these Marxist groups are mostly comprised of paid actors leading disenfranchised anarchists looking for a place to rage. These trained Marxist communist agitators, along with their Antifa allies, are funded by elitists who are trying to overthrow our free republic. This isn't just a theory, end quote. Well, he's right, it's not just a theory. It's a conspiracy theory. But you wouldn't believe the origins of this conspiracy. Let me explain. In 1902, newspapers all across Tsarist Russia started printing these little blurbs they called the Protocol 
protocols of the elders of Zion. There were 27 of them. They claimed that they were found on the bodies of Jewish soldiers, and they were their plan for world domination. It was strange stuff. The protocols said stuff like, we, the Jews, will try to take over the media, banks, and educational systems. We'll spread Marxism and Darwinism as much as possible. They also contained sections about ritual sacrifices and stuff. Sound familiar? Pretty much every conspiracy theory you can think of today, including QAnon, came from this compilation of 27 protocols from around 1902, especially the conspiracies you hear coming from QAnon. It's just protocols of the Elders of Zion conspiracies rebranded. Seriously, you don't even realize how many many conspiracies route back to this set of newspaper clippings. But get this, the Elders of Zion never existed. Nobody ever turned up the original papers they supposedly found on the Jewish soldier. It was all made up. The protocols were compiled into a book called The Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion in 1905, which, by the by, was declassified in the 1990s by the FBI and could be found on the FBI website. So the newspaper clippings are published in 1905, and then on August 17th, 1921, the London Times News paper discovered that the whole thing was plagiarized from a satire book that never even mentioned Jews called Maurice Jolie's Dialogue in Hell between Machiavelli and Montesquieu from 1865. I may be mispronouncing that, forgive me if so. We don't know exactly who plagiarized and orchestrated its release, but the belief is that it was done by the precursor to the KGB, Tsarist Russia's secret police called the Okhrana. Anyways, let me tie it back into what we were talking about. Remember what Greg Locke said about BLM and Antifa being paid act? The reason he believes that is because, buckle up for this one, he claims somebody found a contract on a BLM rioter, a contract between George Soros, a Jewish Holocaust survivor, and the BLM protesters. Sound familiar? I'm telling you, every conspiracy theory in existence today is a recycled conspiracy from 100 years ago. It's all the same garbage repeated over and over, even down to Greg Locke's irrational hatred for Darwinists and Marxists. No evidence required. Just say it like you know what you're talking about and poor gullible suckers will believe it. This is what socialism looks like. I've been to communist nations. I've been to those in South America, Central America. And I'm telling you, the United States, we don't understand what their agenda is, but we're being awakened to it pretty quick. Anyways, back to Flashpoint. Almost every conspiracy theory espoused on Flashpoint has its roots in this Protocols book, and they've been using the conspiracies espoused in this book of Protocols to whip people into a blood frenzy for decades. Now, I don't think the people on Flashpoint are pulling up copies of Protocols and finding the next big conspiracy to repeat, but somebody is. Then they repeat that conspiracy, and for some reason, it resonates with conspiracy theorists, and people believe it. It's been the source of every major successful conspiracy theory in the past hundred years and that is just bizarre to me the whole act of war thing he keeps saying that was an act of war he believes, or at least wants his audience to believe, that there's an elite globalist cabal that's pulling strings behind the scenes to persecute and destroy the good, innocent Christians who never did anything to anybody. This act of war stuff is directed at globalists, which is ultimately another word for the Jewish elite. He might not even realize it's a reference to the Jewish elite, but that's where the conspiracy theory came from. The cabal is just another word for the elders of Zion. Okay, let's continue listening to Gene Bailey's weird speech and see what else he had to say. And what's above that, above the rhinos and the Democrats, it's not even George Soros. And he's a problem. There's an act of war. What we're dealing with is much higher. Again, George Soros is a Jewish Holocaust survivor who's become the center of so many conspiracy theories, it's ridiculous. People believe he is the elders of Zion at this point. I'm sure their ideology is getting clearer by the second. It's not even George Soros. And he's a problem. There's an act of war. What we're dealing with is much higher. We're looking at, as sure as I'm standing here, an act of war against you, your family, your children, your grandchildren. They want to take your children. They want to elevate government over God. And the truth is, they will do it if you don't stand up. They will take it, as, as Eric has talked about, history proves this. 
get people whipped into a blood frenzy, and ready to do literally anything to protect their interests. I would argue that this is the most powerful voting bloc in the United States, and they're the persecuted ones, right? They pretend to be persecuted constantly for one very simple reason. Persecution creates a sense of group loyalty, trust, and brotherhood. Every cult in history has leaned into the persecution complex. If they can make you think you're being mistreated by somebody, they can morally justify literally any action to recognize the situation. Persecution is a quick route to political power because it can be used to radicalize people. But who's powerful enough to persecute the most powerful group in the United States? Why, the Cabal, of course. A group so unbelievably powerful that it doesn't even exist. The Globalists, the Cabal, which is a euphemism for the Jewish puppet masters. Whether they realize they're referring to it or not, they are. So we had a stolen election. Then we had January 6th. And we all thought things would be taken care of by January 20th. Neither happened. And then we have good people who just walked in a building innocently, sitting in jail, sitting in prison. And somehow this is just okay. It is okay unless you and I stand up and understand we are not in a battle, we are in a war. And this war is for you it's against you and it's against me and it's against our children. I'm telling you, these people live in an alternate reality. This is more of the persecution complex. They want to get you revved up enough that you'll do whatever it takes to take down this invisible enemy. Once they get you there, they'll point you in the right direction. They're preparing people to take part in what's called stochastic terrorism. Here's the definition. The incitement of a violent act through public demonization of a group or individual. There was a doctor named Dr. Tiller. He performed abortions on people. Just a normal dude. Went to church and lived his life. But Bill O'Reilly went out there on his Fox show every night and talked about how evil this guy was. Depraved, the source of all the world's problems. He was just another guy on the street. He wasn't morally bankrupt or evil or anything else. But Bill O'Reilly convinced his audience that he was bad enough that something should be done about it. And all it took was one lone nut in his audience to show up to Dr. Tiller's church one day and take action. Now Dr. Tiller's gone. Whose fault is that? Most definitely the attacker, without a doubt. But Bill O'Reilly must have known what he was doing. He must have known that working a crowd into a blood frenzy like that was extremely likely to have dire consequences, right? Now, Gene Bailey isn't pointing his audience in any particular direction yet. He's just getting them ready right now. So when he finds somebody he can accuse of being a globalist or an elite or a member of the cabal, he can point his audience in the right direction and do something about it. Which, by the way, he did in the very next episode. He's been targeting Boston Children's Hospital and the doctors there recently. In 2021, about 42,000 children and teens across the United States received a diagnosis of gender dysphoria, nearly triple the number in 2017. This is at epidemic levels, not the pandemic. This is at epidemic levels. All right, so I got a phone number for you. <coughs> We're going to put it on the screen as soon as you got it, guys. Put it up there. Uh, this is for the, now you say, why are you just giving the, the name to one hospital? Because it's where we can start. Don't call them now. Call them during business hours tomorrow or whenever you're watching this, make sure you're calling East Coast business hours time. Anyway, that's what Gene Bailey is setting the audience up for right now. That's what this TV show Flashpoint is all about. They get people emotionally ready to do something crazy, so when they point the finger at a Dr. Tiller or a Boston Children's Hospital or something like that, they know the audience will do the rest. They won't have to make direct threats of violence against anybody. The audience already knows what they need to do. The free speech laws in the U.S. are pretty broad. If you don't directly call for violence, you're pretty much safe from prosecution. So they get people riled up like this and then point a finger at somebody they don't like. They never have to make an overt, obvious threat to get the results they're looking for. Let's keep watching. But suddenly we were dealt with the very reality that our even our existence to worship what our founding fathers fought for, died for when they signed their name to that constitution and the Declaration of Independence, now we are being persecuted for. And we were letting them do it. They are not being persecuted. They don't even know the meaning of the term, but they need to spread the idea as much as possible to radicalize their listeners. Don't you think for a moment that their attempt to shut down the church wasn't forced to get you to be quiet? All of this was to strike fear in you. 
And as long as you give in to the fear, you give in to the, the enemy. He's talking about COVID here. He's claiming there was no need to social distance in the first place. The whole point of social distancing was to shut down the church. Every event that happens in society, every piece of news that comes out is used to further their persecution complex. Before we continue, I wanted to mention something. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. First, there's Patreon. That's probably the best way. But if you want to get something back for your support, you can check me out on Teespring. I sell all kinds of shirts and mugs and stuff on there. Or you can check out my other YouTube channels. I have my fireside chat channel where I talk about the intersection between religion and politics. I have my Telltale Unfiltered channel where I watch sermons and do long-form breakdowns of these kinds of people. Or you can check out my Telltale Reads channel where I read books by extremists. Right now we're reading a book titled President Donald J. Trump, The Son of Man, The Christ by Helgard Muller. It gets absolutely nutty, so give it a watch if it sounds interesting. All links are in the description. Okay, let's keep watching Gene Bailey give his unhinged sermon. We Then we have the botched uh, the botched withdrawal from Afghanistan. And I tell you, it made me so mad. It made me so mad any man or woman in the military. This is why we stand behind our veterans because there should be an America where we never leave anyone behind. Never. That was an act of war. That was an act of war against you. And it was by our own people by a faulty administration that stood up and decided, oh, it's okay, they're expendable. Well, that you say, well, they didn't say that. Well, that's what their actions said. Now he seems to be going down a list of every major culture war issue that's happened in the past two years. He's referring to Biden's withdrawal from Afghanistan. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but suffice to say, the withdrawal could have gone better. But it could have gone worse, too. Before Trump left office, he left a withdrawal plan on Biden's desk, scheduled to take place shortly after he took office. Biden stuck to the plan, surprisingly, and actually pulled us out. In the process of pulling out, there was an attack, and 13 people lost their lives on the way out the door. Extremely tragic. I'm gutted by the fact that anybody lost their lives. But you know what Biden didn't do? He didn't stay in Afghanistan and continue this war for another 20 years. Almost 2,500 US troops died in Afghanistan over the course of the war, and around 70,000 total people died throughout the war. The alternative to pulling out would be to stay and lose more people. But they have to bring this up every time they wanna garner a little support from the base because they know they can rev veterans up with it and they can appeal to people's sense of extreme nationalism. It's just more propaganda, plain and simple. Then while we were dealing with all of this, what we didn't know, in our schools, our kindergartners were being taught to go see drag shows and decide if they were male or female. That's not happening. I don't think that even needs further analysis. It's just completely made up, like the claim that litter boxes are being placed in school bathrooms for kids who identify as cats. A friend of mine in Illinois actually knows a teacher that comes to uh, school as a furry and wears ears and a tail and uses a litter box at the front of the classroom to relieve himself. It's completely made up. This has never happened anywhere, in any school in the United States ever. Same with the kindergartner claim. It's just nonsense. But it's nonsense that plays to the base. It's nonsense they believe. No fact checking necessary. So while most of us were at home going, what? <laughs> what? They were turning your children and they're turning your grandchildren. We thought public school was a good thing, and it should have been. But what has happened in the public school system is an abhorrent disaster. My point of that, it's an act. The enemy, the devil, Satan, is after your kids. Humans are programmed to want to protect the most innocent among us, our children. Doesn't matter which side you're on, you want to make sure children are being taken care of and they're safe. That's why they're often the subject of conspiracy theories. Somebody is after you and your family. They want to turn your children against you. If it's true, that's enough to motivate anybody to go to any lengths to stop it. This is a long string of targeted conspiracies designed to radicalize people, and I'm blown away that the people in the audience don't see right through it. I guess that's what happens when people are subjected to propaganda for long enough. Foreign powers are out to destroy America. The world is watching what happens in America. And I do not care. This is the resolve you're going to have to get to. 
You get to the place where your resolve says, I do not care. Foreign powers. Who would these foreign powers be? He's talking about the cabal, the globalists, the elite, the same people that were being referenced in the protocols of the elders of Zion, a shadowy cabal that operates behind the scenes to destroy a country from the inside and take control of it. Whether they realize this or not, the entire sermon he's giving right now is deeply disturbingly anti-Semitic, but it gets even worse. He's hinting at his next point. You have to get to the point where you say, I don't care. I don't care about what I hear you asking. Keep listening, he's about to bring it home. But let me bring it home really easily to you right now. You see, there's a Goliath in your life, and if there's a David on the inside of you, you're not looking at how big Goliath is or how many people he destroyed. What you're seeing is what David said, what do I get if I kill him? <laughs> now tell me again what I get if I take this guy out. That's bold Mike Lindell type of confidence. That's pretty disturbing. Again, he's not pointing the finger at anybody specific, yet he's just referring to some shadowy cabal, some group that wants to take your children away from you. But when the time is right, Flashpoint has and will point the finger at somebody specific, somebody whose life they want to ruin. The very next episode, as a matter of fact. Now you say, why are you just giving the, the name to one hospital? Because it's where we can start. Don't call them now. Call them during business hours tomorrow or whenever you're watching this, Make sure you're calling East Coast business hours time. This is stochastic terrorism, and I honestly have no idea how they managed to charge Charles Manson for the attacks when he didn't lift a finger. But they can't manage to charge these people with the attacks that directly result from the types of attacks they inspire. But the real battle isn't here at this meeting. The real battle is when you go home and you go back to work. And you go look at your child or your grandchild that doesn't know what sex they are. That's when the real battle comes. There's got to be an understanding that there's something living on the inside of you that's much bigger than who you are on your own. That gives you that David kind of boldness that says, what do I get, God, if I take this guy out? Again, I don't understand. How do they get away with this? How did Charles Manson get charged and spend the rest of his life in jail, but people like Alex Jones or Gene Bailey or any of the others who inspire stochastic events can say whatever they want, up to and including what we're listening to here? Alex Jones went so far as to put people's lives in direct danger by bringing on a guest who released his victims' names, addresses, and phone numbers live on air. They had to move like six times or something. How do they get away with this? How is this covered under free speech. The free speech laws we have in the U.S. are pretty clear. You're allowed to say anything you want except direct calls to violence. What if the things you say aren't direct calls to violence, but they directly lead to violence? I just don't know how they avoid legal consequences for this kind of thing. Now, there's a lot of people out there saying Jesus is coming soon, and he is. But listen, we got a lot of work to do before Jesus comes back. Don't get me wrong. I'm ready to go on the first bus load out. However, there's other scriptures that will occupy until he comes. These people intend to take control of the U.S. at any cost. They're framing it like they're taking control back from the globalists, the international elites who are currently in power. They're secretly pulling strings in the U.S. government when they aren't even U.S. citizens. They have to take control back from the international cabal who wants to control everything and everybody in the world. And they aren't going to stop until they get what they want. It's a deeply disturbing headspace to be in, and we absolutely must vote these people out of power. The people who make appearances on Flashpoint, like Gene Bailey and others, have congressmen, governors, and judges on all the time. Not to mention their connection to Trump, but more importantly, beyond just voting the people out who show up on Flashpoint and support them, we have to support the targets of their rhetoric. People keep talking about a civil war. I really don't think there's going to be a civil war, but stochastic terrorism is most definitely going to increase dramatically. It's already started. People on the right will find somebody they don't like, somebody they can blame all their problems and persecution on, a Dr. Tiller or a Boston Children's Hospital employee, and they'll start these systems systematic campaigns to take them down by any means. We already see this happening all over the place. I would suggest keeping an eye out for people who are being targeted the most by shows like Flashpoint or Glenn Beck or Donald Trump. Find a GoFundMe for them and donate to it. Stochastic events like what we're watching right now with Gene Bailey are becoming more and more common by the moment. Find some way to help the targets because the next target could be you. I've already experienced it because of some of the videos I've released and it is not fun. Anyways, that's all I've got for you. If you like what I do 
and you want to see me continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. First, there's Patreon. That's probably the best way. But if you want to get something back for your support, you can check me out on Teespring. I sell all kinds of shirts and mugs and stuff on there. Or you can check out my other YouTube channels. I have my Fireside Chat channel, where I talk about the intersection between religion and politics. I have my Telltale Unfiltered channel, where I watch sermons and do long-form breakdowns of these kinds of people. Or you can check out my Telltale Reads channel, where I read books by extremists. Right now, we're reading a book titled President Donald J. Trump, The Son of Man, The Christ by Helgard Muller. It gets absolutely nutty, so give it a watch if it sounds interesting. All links are in the description. Okay, thanks for watching, guys.